Women of Reddit, what is your nice girl's finish last story? I had a crush on a guy, who was also a very close friend, whom I would eventually end up dating. I wanted to ask him to prom. But I had heard through the grapevine that a mutual friend wanted to ask him to prom as well. So I called her and asked her if she was intending to ask this guy to prom. She said no. And I said cool. Because I'm going to ask him to prom. I asked him to prom that week. He told me he had already been asked. By the girl I had spoken to. It turned into a whole thing. It was dumb as sheet and looking back I can laugh now but at the time it was bullshit. I have watched the majority of my friends trap their partners. Flushing the pill down the toilet. Not even bother to take it. Stabbing condoms. And I always thought it was a truly deceitful way to bring a child into the world. Fast forward 10 years and I'm almost 30. Not married and no children because my boyfriend is a commitment phobie. Meanwhile all the trapper slappers as I like to call them are married with big houses and families. They have everything I want. But not the way I want it. I have to prove I'm a badass with my work. My personality is so nice mom that every new MBA frat boy manager who swings through my shop assumes I'm a token and talks down to me like I'm an idiot. I watch them wash in and wash out. I make more than them anyway. Tried to help you. Dude. I used to feel like I was finishing last since I don't get immediate respect like my more imposing co-workers. But after 10 years I dry my tears with large paychecks. When on a date with a guy I met through my friends, they're married. It went great. Texting every day. ETC. A couple of weeks later. Our friends invited us to hang out. After a few drinks. We started playing Never Have I Ever. It ended up coming out during the game that I've never had sex. Long story. He stopped talking texting me after that. I found out a few weeks later that he started sleeping with one of our friends that was over that night. They started dating soon after that. And coming over to hang out. Then my friends mentioned all of us going bar hopping. It sounded fun. And I was game. Then they said actually. Would you mind babysitting the kids? You're responsible and we trust you. Besides. It's gonna be couples going anyways. I learned that day that responsible fun. At least I have a great job and a motorcycle. Colon dart. I had been telling my best friend for months about the huge crush I had on a guy in one of my classes. One day I asked if she would be there when we first hung out so I would be a little more comfortable. She had a class with him too. But neither of us talked to him much. She brought up the topic of 6 and was telling him how she'd slept with 5, 1 stroke 2 guys and was asking him about his experience. I admitted I'd never kissed anyone. After, he asked if she wanted to go to the soccer game with him while I had to go home. Within the week they were ducking and she paraded him around me. I went out to a club with the guy I was dating and my friends, who he didn't really know. When it was time to leave we all walked home together. I was staying over at the guy's house that night. I was pretty drunk and not feeling great so I decided to go rehydrate and go to bed. I was worried about leaving my friend so I asked the guy I was seeing if he could make sure she got home okay as it was late. She only lived 5 minutes up the road, I waited in his bed for over an hour for him to come back. When he eventually did. He went straight to sleep. I found out a week later that he slept with her whilst I was waiting. Online dating. If you ghost on someone you're a rich. If you don't ghost and politely message your date that it's not working out. You get an ever ending spew of insults. Great threats. A uh, too ugly for me anyway sheet. Completed with bad spelling. I was voted into president of student council in my college. I worked with younger girls who just wanted the title on their resumes and perks. I kept strict with them that the students money should be for prizes and awesome parties for the students. Not expensive trips and rewards for council members. Tuition is expensive enough we should give back as much of that as possible to the students experience. Well after almost an entire year of fighting with these selfish people. They thought I was being unfair to them voted me off with a week of my term left. 
so they could go on one last student pay trip while charging the students for the last activities they put on. It was crushing and really put bigger politics into perspective for me. I had spent a year building up the confidence of my ex-boyfriend who was extremely insecure. Consistently reinforcing him that he is attractive. Smart. Worthy of any women's time. You know. Stuff a girlfriend should do for their partners. He left me for the girl he thought he never had a chance with because in his words. You made me feel like I could do anything I want. I did not realize that involved doing other girls too. I got diagnosed with juvenile arthritis senior year of high school. I decided to go off 180 miles away from home for college instead of going to the school I hated that was 30 minutes away. My first semester went great. I had fun. Made friends. And got all lays. My second semester started. And the first day of classes I came down with strep throat. It triggered a huge flare of my arthritis. I could barely move. I asked my parents to let me drop my classes and come home. But they said no. They told me to stick it out and finish my classes and then recover over the summer. I stopped going to class because walking hurt too bad. I stopped eating because the cafeteria was too far away. Failed all my classes. Lost 30 pounds. But I stayed at school because that was what my parents wanted. And I didn't want to disappoint them. I ended up in the hospital. I dropped out of school completely and I'm still trying to get back. Now to the school near home. I have several destroyed joints from the flare. Some that need replacement. I'm 19. I got a B in my freshman year wood shop because I wouldn't cut in line to use the machines. I also wouldn't protest when anyone else cut in front of me. As a result several of my projects were literally the last ones turned in. Nice means spineless. Right? Not cutting in line equals nice. Letting other people cut in front equals spineless. I used to. And still occasionally do. Bartend at a dive bar of ill repute. The other bartenders treat the bar like their own personal cooler. Take advantage of the Drew Gus being tossed their way by customers. Frequently get too wasted to effectively work. Disappear into the stockroom to duck customers while the bar is still open and of course overcharge customers to pocket the extra cash. I don't do any of these things. Don't do any of the Drew Gus offered to me, for the most part. Stay sober so as to be able to count money and always let it faced customers know when they've accidentally given me a $10 bill as a tip when I'm sure they meant to hand me a $1. I have a boyfriend and let the more amorous customers know that I'm faithful and there's no chance. I try to be a good employee. I still get regularly blamed for stealing or drinking the liquor I guess because everyone else always does and the owners are paranoid. I don't steal boyfriends. But I have had multiple boyfriends stolen from me. And the girls knew I was dating them when they moved in. Also. Being the good girlfriend usually devolves into a situation where you're being taken advantage of re and paid household and emotional labor. 12 year old me was a chubby. Socially awkward dork. With braces and awful frizzy hair. The whole 9 yards of awkward puberty. I didn't have many friends because I had awful social skills. And most of the friends I had were boys because I didn't know how to interact with other girls very well. I would always try to be there for my guy friends. Always be there when they wanted to hang out or have someone to talk to. Obviously I was crushing on all of my friends. Everyone else was getting boyfriends why couldn't I have one? Because I was an awkward dorky kid with zero confidence and nothing to offer. That's why. Took me a couple of years to figure out that just being nice wasn't going to get me noticed as a romantic partner. I needed to develop my own personality and grow into a real person with a life. I'm happy I don't just feel like a nice girl anymore. First grade. I will never forget. Our teacher. Who up until this point I viewed as a champion of goodness and justice. Had to leave the room and told us to sit silently Indian style. Yes I'm that old, in front of her chair to wait for her return. I was the only one who did it the entire time she was gone. Meanwhile, about 8 little asshole boys ran around screeching like hooligans until someone shouted teachers coming. 
and those misbehaving brats lined up in front of me like little angels right before she entered the room. They all got lollipops for being in the front row. I had left some space because I had remembered how teacher had always laughingly said. Leave a little room for my feet. Everyone else. Myself included got punished. My face burned with rage and I cried but I did not tattle because I knew teacher didn't like tattletales. The injustice burns me to this day. And that was the day I learned life isn't fair. I was 6. I've noticed many of my friends are afraid to speak up. Whether it's getting the wrong order or a bad table at a restaurant. Receiving poor customer service. Being treated unfairly by others. ETC. Women are generally taught to not make a fuss and keep our mouths shut. Like. My friend would rather eat something she doesn't like than tell the waiter. Hey. This isn't what I ordered for fear of seeming like a rich or drawing attention to a problem. I wasn't raised that way. So it kind of drives me crazy to watch my friends act this way. But I recognize it's a symptom of a deeper problem within the patriarchy. Edit. Thanks to the men of Reddit for the down votes. Nasty comments and proving my point. Nothing I love more than men coming into a post aimed towards women and telling women how they're wrong. I'm a little too much of a romantic. I went to a very small high school, like laughably small, so I never had a relationship or anything during that time. All of my friends in college have experimented or been in relationships but I never have. I'm very shy and have a hard time putting myself out there. But I also want my first experience to be with someone that I like. And not just a hookup. Colon. I made decisions that I stand behind but I would change some items. I made more than my husband when we married. Not by much but more. My mother died soon after we married and most went into a house. The two kids had disabilities so I stayed home for 5 years to get them back on track. My husband decided to start his own business. I started freelancing in my field and was offered a full time job. He asked me to work for him and I did that instead of my own career. 5 years with no pay. 5 years at $500 a month. And 4 years at minimum wage. I have very little in retirement. I have low prospects at another job. My social security is very low and now depends on him. My family. His family and most friends are so proud of him and seem to ignore my contribution. I live a good life now. No worries about day to day money. If my husband decides to divorce me I am royally screwed. I also have an ego that bristles. Don't be like me and support only the dreams of others. Remember to pay yourself first. This will get buried. I liked a boy in high school but was about to go on a trip to Germany for the summer. All of my friends knew how much I liked him. Especially my one friend Liesl, not her real name. I had been emailing him the entire time about my trip and that I couldn't wait to see him when I got back. He emailed back and said he couldn't wait to see me either. He offered to pick me up and take me home from where the bus from the airport would drop us off. He emailed me had something important he wanted to tell me. I was so jazzed and excited. I get home from the trip and get off the bus holding a gift I had gotten him when he greets me holding Liesl's hand. Apparently he couldn't wait to tell me they had started dating but she begged him to wait and tell me when I got home. Then she begged me in private to not be mad at her. This guy that I was good friends with for a long time always tried to make it more than a friendship. He sleeps around with a lot of girls and even though we got along great I didn't want to be just another one this past October we started hanging out every day and things were heating up for sure but I was still hesitant and he told me that I was his dream girl and that he wanted to date me someday. I ended up sleeping with him and whatnot, and about a month later the minute things got too serious he bailed and told me that I was too nice and he basically said he would cheat on me if we dated because he's not a one woman guy at this point in his life. Suck that I gave him a chance but at least he was honest with me. TL. DR gave a guy a chance who told me I was too nice for him. I had been dating a guy for roughly a month after being friends for a year or so. One day he told me that he wanted to break up. Because he had realized he was in love with his old friends with benefits. And that I want her to make me happy the way you make me happy. Colon. 
my ex cheated on me before we were married. Obviously I gave him the second chance he begged for. 3 months shy of our 20 year anniversary. The divorce was final. After he cheated on me again. And got engaged to another woman while he was stationed in another city. Postscript, she and I became friends, still are. She had been told we were divorced already and had no idea someone was being hurt. But as for finishing last, maybe not in the long run. Both his fee and K and I are engaged to amazing men a couple years later and deliriously happy. When I was 16 I found out that I needed to be in a wheelchair for 6 months because of health problems. I told my then girlfriend about it over Skype. After telling her she turned off her cam and switched to messaging. She asked how long I'm supposed to be in the chair. I told her it was to be determined because I really didn't know how long yet. In the next message she dumped me because personal reasons. TL. DR. My first girlfriend dumped me because I was crippled. I was in love with my best friend and didn't know it whilst growing up with her. I always made sure she did her homework, even if that meant I did it. I was happy to, I'd give her incentive to get up in the mornings for school. 2. Our first class started at 7.05am. Like buying McDonald's and have coffee ready. We always played around and kissed in front of teachers and students to make a statement. But it was, to me, noted that we liked guys and it was just an act. So when she finally made a move on me, I was so confused and ruined it. She is probably the only girl I'll ever love. I was infatuated with this guy in my first year of college. We hung out. He lived on my floor. And I really wanted to go out with him. But I was too nervous. So one day. I bake a tray of brownies. I make them from scratch. Spending hours to impress him with my man catching baking skills. I bring the brownies to his room. Wearing what amounted to a homemade dress. And knock on the door. Just a minute. He shouts. There's some clambering and rustling. But I make nothing of it. Thinking he must be playing video games in his underwear or something. Turns out. He was rushing to put clothes on because he had a six worker in his room. And he thought I was in Ra coming to investigate the 30 something year old woman he had brought into our dorm. Long story short. I ate the brownies by myself that night and he never spoke to me again. Perhaps out of embarrassment at being caught paying for six.